So, like, what are what are some names? I have a couple names just like off the top of my head, but what are some names that you like? Some guys that you wrote about who you think could be valuable in in that part of the rotation. So, this if you're just looking at point guard, there's if you're thinking offense first for mid level mm-hmm. money, I think that the best name on that list, conceivably in that price range, is DJ Augustine. Um, a proven three-point shooter who can get distribute is a size li- liability from a defensive standpoint. I can't see any team giving him more than middle level. Maybe at this point he wants to win. So he, he takes a little bit less to come be, you know, play a meaningful role, but he, maybe he wants to start somewhere and that's not going to be in Boston, but um, that's probably the best name in terms of pure, you know, passing and shooting talent on the list. Um, I'm not sure if that makes sense for this team, though, when you already have another six foot point guard in Kemba Walker. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's kind of interesting to kind of tie into this conversation what's happening with the schedule going forward and how fast the season is going to be in the regular season mm-hmm. and how much teams are going to need to load manage their veterans. And so Kemba Walker is someone who I would doubt is going to be playing in all 72 games or 50 games or whatever it is. I think that that's someone that they're really going to be given the money that he's owed, uh, given what happened with his knee in the bubble and his performance uh, down the stretch of um, the playoffs. Like that's someone who I'd want to manage and kind of massage his way through the regular season as much as possible. So I'm not too worried if I were to sign DJ that would they be kind of like, uh, replicating each other in terms of size and that's not what you want. I don't think DJ would be on the floor at the end of a playoff game regardless. So I'd be fine with it. I'm a fan of his, uh, had a little bit of a down, uh, shooting year, um, compared to his previous two years, but like, he's just a really good outside shooter, really like competent setup, man. Um, so I like that. I like that pick. Um, can I throw a name at you who I don't know who I don't know if he would be available financially. It would have to take a pay cut, but someone who recently said um, that he's really wanting to prioritize winning at this stage in his career. Um, and that is, he's one of my least favorite players. So it's kind of funny that I'm saying this, but <laughs> is uh, Jeff Teague. Yeah. He's on my list too. Um, oh, or just in terms of like, mid-level op i don't like i'm not even sure he's gonna get a full in mid-level um just based i mean maybe he just watch like maybe you get him engaged somewhere which minnesota and atlanta weren't good places for that for him in the last couple of years um but it's he when he's atlanta, on he's i would like, throw out atlanta I mean, atlanta, I would throw out atlanta. minnesota is where you look at it and you're like okay they were and there are all sorts of issues going on there I guess for him, if you want to just talk offense, he's an interesting piece. If you want to see a guy just die on screens miserably, he's also your man. <laughs> uh, very fair. Very fair. Um, that's a name that, yeah, I haven't been to, and he's getting up there in age a little bit, um, even though I'm older than him, which makes me feel really depressed. But uh <laughs> Uh, he's getting up there a little bit. Um, and I, I was never even really a huge fan of his, like even when he was an all-star in Atlanta that one year. Yeah. Um, something about his game just has always kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but it just, we're talking pure talent um, at $5 million for one year. Like that's sure. Like add them to what they have. Cause I mean, again, I'm just like, I don't think they need to, hit a home run with whoever they sign. I think whoever they sign needs to just come in and like fill a very narrow lane of competence because I think that the the heaviest lifting will be on, I think Jalen's going to take another leap. I think he's going to be an all-star. And I think that Tatum's going to take like a sizable leap. Um, so like, the heavy offensive, like, I don't need this dude to, I don't need Jeff Teague to come in and take 10 shots a game. Right. Like, I don't. So that's the kind of guy you're right. That won't be stealing shots from the guys you want 
Like he can shoot, but he doesn't necessarily want to shoot. He wants to pass first, which works here. And so it's, and for, before we go into more names, like I think the more interesting thing to me in terms of like where you want to use this money heading into free agency, if you're the Celtics is like, I don't mind Marcus Smart, the point guard either. And so part of me wonders like, okay, if you're bringing another point guard, then that kind of pushes Marcus off the ball more on offense. Or, I mean, you know, you obviously, it's never bad to have multiple ball handlers on the floor, but it, it pushes him. A guy like Teague would push him away from primary ball handling duties when he is on the floor. And I'm not sure I want that. Like, with Smart, like I would almost be just as well being like, all right, Smart, I want you going back to running the pick and roll and sending him guys. Because you're pretty good at it when that was your main focus. Um, but it is, at the same time, it's nice to have that flexibility when, you know, when you're, you said when you're managing Kemba to have the extra pure ball handler that, you know, you can slot in there and then you can keep some more coming off the bench. 